So earlier today, we got to sit down with Tyler Nevin and just talk to him about the fact that while this seems like a natural path to the game, they always had other options. Take a listen. Yeah, uh, it's not very surprising. Um, you know, everybody asks, like, what did your dad push you to do? And it's just, he never pushed me to play baseball, but I was just around it so much that I grew to love it at a young age, um, interacting with guys in the clubhouse and um, seeing what it's like after winning a big league ball game. It just is, it's very infectious, and uh, it's something I've wanted since I was walking around in diapers. Now, you and Taryn, of course, drafted at different points and having different areas that you've targeted this career ultimately didn't end up together until Norfolk this season. But when you talk about all the guys you're around the clubhouse with, it's usually talking about the big leaguers that you got to see, the guys that your dad was shoulder to shoulder with. Did you grow up, though, with any of those other kids who are now also playing? Um, I th There are pictures of me and Daz Cameron playing uh, in uh, the outfield when uh, he was – or. Mike Cameron had his uh, little stint with the Padres. Um, I haven't kept in touch with him too much. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, the Hoffman boys, I know a couple of them have played minor league baseball, um, Trevor Hoffman's sons. Um, but, no, it is kind of cool when I see Kevin um, in uh, Toronto. We never really grew up around each other, but just our dads were really close when they played together in Houston. So um, every time you see a guy like that, it's kind of cool to just give him a nod and, like, kind of we know what it's like being in these same shoes so uh, it's something cool for sure um, but yeah no it's it, this, is, this is the first time actually playing with somebody like like Taryn whose dad's been around the game also have you guys had a chance to, to talk about that yet and maybe compare the uh, the family upbringing yeah um, a lot because his dad was also a coach uh, for many years and um, my dad retired when I was about 10 um, so a lot of you know, growing up, he was actually a coach. I do remember his playing days very well, but um, kind of that same aspect of, you know, going to minor league games and, um, you know, hit, catching up for fungos and when they got to back to the big leagues and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool to, to have somebody to talk to about those kinds of experiences and uh, compare. I like that you just mentioned the fact that you saw a lot of the coaching career because I think on the outside looking in, everybody says, oh, well, they were involved in the big league. So it was this glittering big league life the whole time for these kids. But you saw the grind. You saw that you still have to put the work in. It doesn't matter if you've already been to the top. Uh, take us behind the scenes a little bit of that. I know usually that entails family still having to move around, but just witnessing that you're not really done earning your ability to stay up here. Absolutely. Yeah, my dad played. 12 years in the big leagues and his first job back in baseball after playing was an independent ball <laughs> so that I believe that was 20 uh, 2009 and he was the manager there but he was also uh, the laundry guy he was making runs to the laundromat he was he was raking the fields um, so he kind of did it all and then he went back to double-a and then I actually played in Erie and saw that those weren't the very uh, glamorous uh, conditions as as you would see in the big leagues but um that's something i'm really proud of for him is is he worked his way back up you know he, he definitely spent more time in the minor leagues as a coach than he did a player um and it's something i respect him greatly for what did watching that grind and that move ultimately teach you about what you were going to expect once you did decide that you really did kind of want to follow along in baseball yeah that's uh you know i, I get a lot of the same questions of you know how, what kind of impact did he have like what memories uh what times could he give you some teaching points um a lot of it was in the minor leagues and that's where a lot of my advantages i would say as as a son of a big leaguer and a coach um i got to see what it's like uh coming up you know i saw the big leagues at a young age but when i was in high school and uh older years in middle school uh when i was sort of starting to think about this is actually a, a realistic career for me I saw what it was like, and I knew what I was getting into, so to speak, um, before I got into it, and that's that's a huge advantage. Nothing was a huge surprise to me when I got into the game, and um, something I'm really grateful for. We've heard from a couple guys, and they're, they're still coming up waiting on their time to be drafted, but they're the only child in the house, and sometimes they talk about the weight of feeling that, that they are expected to carry on the legacy by themselves. Now, for you and Taryn, both speaking very fondly of your brothers, really close bonds with them. What is that like, though, to just be able to share that with somebody else who really gets it more than anyone outside of yourself? Yeah, I would say my brother gets it more than me now at this point, um, now that I've I've gotten to play in the big leagues uh, for the short stint. But, uh, yeah, now he's got – he. Uh, we actually – I was home for the all-star break when he got drafted, 
and we were talking about that, the exact same questions that I get, he's going to now get, but also about me. <laughs> so um, it's just it's just part of it, you know, um, and it's not really the expectations in our family. It's just um, we're just very happy for each other to experience what, what we're going through right now and to see us grow up around this game and now get to play professionally. It's something very special. It absolutely is. The The biggest thing that comes along with this is the tag of being level-headed. This stuff really doesn't phase you just because you've been around it for so long. How do you break that down, though? I mean, the, the mental and emotional side of the fact that, yes, you did grow up in this, you're still going to have those human moments. Absolutely. Yeah, it's... Uh it's not something that's easy throughout this game when you when you go through struggles, but uh, just again going back to that experience of, of having my dad in my corner um, and other players around too. But just learning to take a step back and get your positives um, of what happened in the game. You can always find something positive that you did in the game, um, whether that's be a good teammate. It doesn't always have to be on the field. So those are little things that um, you know they go a long way in in the clubhouse and um, throughout through your career. All right, Tyler, I think all of Birdland is really excited to see where you and Taryn Vavra are able to take this. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. No problem. Thank you for having me.